Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at some of the rules involving roots. In this case, we're dealing with square roots, but the rules apply nevertheless. Let's say we have the square root of a product a times b. Well, that can be written as the square root of a times the square root of b. Or if we have a fraction, the square root of a divided by b, that can be written as the square root of a divided by the square root of b which makes it often a lot easier to find the square roots. If we have the square root of a negative number but the quantity squared, that can be written as negative the number times negative the number, which gives us a squared, that means the negative sign disappears because we're squaring the negative sign, and then we can simply take the square root and we get a. Where we get into trouble is that if we don't have the parentheses and we have negative a squared. Now the square only applies to the a, so essentially we have the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of a squared. Now we know what the square root of a squared is, that's equal to a, but what is the square root of negative 1? Well by definition the square root of negative 1 is an imaginar imaginary number i. And by definition we say that the square of i is equal to negative 1, so i times i is negative 1. And of course, if i times i is negative 1, then the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. But that is an imaginary number. In the real number set, there's no such thing as multiplying a number by itself and getting a negative result. You can never get a negative number by multiplying two numbers together. If they're both positive, well, then you get a positive result. If they're both negative, you get a negative result. So therefore, we have to come up with an imaginary number such that when you multiply by itself, you get a negative result. And we'll get more into imaginary numbers later. So now that we know those rules, let's apply them to a couple of examples. Let's say the square root of 100 can be written as the square root of 4 times 25. And of course, using the rule that we have over there, that can now be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 25. And of course, we know what these are. This is therefore equal to 2 times 5, which is equal to 10. And of course, we already knew that the square root of 100 is indeed equal to 10, which shows that this rule of seems to work. How about the square root of 100 divided by 4? That can be written as the square root of 100 divided by the square root of 4, which is equal to 10 divided by 2, which is equal to 5. Or, we could have said 100 divided by 4, well, that is equal to the square root of the 25, and of course, the square root of 25 is equal to 5. And you can see that either way, you will get the exact same answer. So it's good to know these two rules that come in very handy. Notice here that if we have parentheses, the square will then apply to both the negative sign and the a. So when you multiply those together, the negative sign disappears. And then you can simply get the square root. And if there's no parentheses and the square does not apply to the negative sign, so you end up with a negative number, you take the square root of a negative number, then that is equal to i times the square root of that number. For example, if you take the square root of negative 36, that is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 36, which is equal to i times the square root of 36, which is 6, and preferably we like to write it as 6 times i. We like to write the number first and then i second unless you're dealing with electrical engineering, they like to reverse the order for whatever reason. Anyway, that is how it's done.